Hi and welcome to another Martin Turn Right. This is the second part of uh, an interview that I'm doing with Miguel Suarez. He is the CEO and founder and CMO as well of uh, the Part Team, a company that is growing the beyond these borders. We live in, in a very small country, but uh, he is exporting to a lot of countries. And um, it's very interesting to understand how he is doing his marketing on B2B market and uh, using digital marketing to do so. So it's a very interesting interview. You can see the first part here, maybe in this link above me. And uh, I hope it's going to be above me. <laughs> I hope so. I think it's, it's something that you are going to like very much because I love this interview. He shared a lot of insights and I hope you are going to enjoy it. And, and, and since you've mentioned the hiring, it's, it's very interesting to me to understand. Obviously, it's going to depend on the budget that you have to hire the right team. But do you prefer when you are going to search for uh, someone to your team? Do you prefer the ones that are, are called the, the T-shaped marketer, which is someone that has a, a much more broader approach to all of the digital marketing uh, sphere like for instance to know about uh, email marketing uh, the ppc um, i don't know the websites uh, a bit about everything or do you prefer someone that it's very specialized in in one skill of uh, uh, the digital marketing it's very good at, uh, at that and then have uh, also some knowledge about all stuff but it's much more specialized when one need of the digital marketing sphere. What is usually your approach and what do you prefer? Well, this brings the conversation again to, to, to your capacity of, of, of having budget to do things. Okay? One thing I am, I am absolutely sure, if you are a very small company, when I, when I mean a very small company of one, two or, or, or three persons, you you will not you will don't have money you will not have money to hire any company that will do anything i would say profit in terms of digital marketing because when you understand the time the consumption of time that is needed to do something and and to do something uh, consistent regarding digital marketing you know that it is not a company that uh, you will have a monthly fee with 500 euros that that company with a fee of 500 euros we will make lots of things to you it will not be possible so if you have a very small company my suggestion is okay try to do it yourself try to to learn it of course not all not all the persons uh, not all the the, the business uh, they have persons that understand this and that can can do this i, I understand that and, and most of the times, of course, they need to hire some company to make, okay, two or three posts by day, because in fact, that, that persons inside the company, they don't, don't know how to do it, where to do it, if it is in Facebook, Instagram, wherever. When you pass to a middle-sized company or a small business, uh, an SBA, like a company with 20 persons, 30, 40 persons like our company, for sure, at that time, you need to hire persons inside your company. You should not go, my opinion, you should not go to a, a, a marketing, an agency company, etc. Because otherwise you will spend lots of, lots of, lots of money. Doesn't mean that they are not more specialized than the persons you are going to hire. But in fact, again, for doing something valuable, to doing something that uh, the return of investment is a good return on investment, you will need again to spend a lot of money if you hire a company. So my, my suggestion is when you reach a certain level, a certain number of, of employees, my opinion is this, if you have 40 employees, uh, two of these employees sh should be related to the marketing of the, of the company, two or three related to the company. You cannot have a, a company with 40 persons and no one is dealing the marketing you put the marketing in the in the outside and answering to your question i believe the most important thing is inside your company you have someone could be a cmeo can be a manager can be a key account can be anyone someone that understand about marketing 
and digital marketing. Okay. Because if you have someone that understand, and this is one of the discussions that if marketing is the same thing of digital marketing, you know, I believe this is very simple to explain. Of course, not marketing is not the same of, of digital marketing. I put the marketing in the, in the top of, of everything and, and digital marketing is one of the branches of the marketing. There, is, there are others that you can, we can, talk, we can talk about marketing. We can talk about digital marketing as a branch, advertising, static advertising as another branch whatever branding branding whatever but you should have someone that understand marketing and digital marketing and then because if you have this if you have this person this person is going to be able to understand uh, the market to understand your product to understand your services to understand where you should place your products where should should you advertise etc and then of course if you can hire very, very high skilled persons for each of the divisions of the digital marketing. Of course, that's the dream of everyone. If you, if I can have one guy that is, uh, or one lady that is very, very expert in male marketing. If I have another that is very expert in influence marketing, another that is very expert in marketing automation. Of course, this is the dream. Another person that needs to make the website, needs to make the landing page, needs to, to make the microsite. Of course, this is a dream of everyone. If you cannot have that, my opinion is you should select the ones that you know you can control inside and the ones that is more valuable to you. And then maybe hire a company to do the other stuff, the other, the other things. One thing I know for sure, and this is, I am absolutely sure about this. You cannot be so proactive if you are hiring an, another company. One of the things that I love in my company and to work marketing, because I love marketing, uh, is this. Here, you cannot see, but I have a door. Uh, I have the door of my office and I have a door in my left. The door in my left goes directly to my marketing team, okay? And I have website creators, I have email marketing, I have uh, copy persons only, they only copy. I have persons that are good in video. And one of the good things of having these persons inside my company is something like this that I'm going to explain. Imagine that I am making a proposal at this moment, a quote for a particular project. I don't know. Imagine that I, may, I am making a proposal for um, a chain of, of cinema, of cinemas. What this proximity brings to me, the benefit is that I can create the proposal, the financial proposal, but at the same time, in five minutes, I can ask to these guys here and, and say, I want a landing page in 30 minutes regarding cinemas. Please make me a paper about cinemas, I go to the copy and say, I want an article about cinemas to put in the blog. Please make me five posts in this next week about cinemas. And this brings all together. When my customer and the touch points, the customer journey and the touch points that I was talking about in the, uh, in the previous in this conversation is like this. When my customer receives a quote and he is a cinema, if he goes to the internet at that time, at that particular day, he will say, wow, these guys are talking about cinema in their blog. And if, and if he goes tomorrow to my network, to my social network, personal or the company, they are going to say, wow, these guys are making posts about cinema. And they launched a paper yesterday about cinema. So this brings consistency to the market and brings, in fact, it gives some credibility to, to my company. And you cannot do that if you have a company that you are eyeing because... Yeah, and, and they understand what works and doesn't work within your business because they are right there with you. They are leaving everything about the company. And uh, I, I completely agree with you. I'm, I have... Uh, a digital marketing agency, Zopli, and one of the main challenges that we uh, we go through it's to understand deeply about uh, the business of our clients. Uh, it's something that we take a lot of time to understand, and yet it's it's almost impossible to have that deep reach 
that you have if you have someone working for the company the, because they are going to leave it every day and uh, we have other clients as well so we we can't reach that kind of uh, of approach because we are not leaving the deep knowledge about the company like you have if you hire someone inside your company so I completely agree with you on that aspect. Yeah, and, and, they, and they become, and they become also my marketing team. They also become specialized in our products, in our philosophy, in our history. They know our history. They know our strengths. They know our weakness, of course. And so. so. And you've talked about the, the cinemas, and that brings me the question: What is actually your ideal audience? What do you think it's going to be? the best client for you do you have uh, this kind of uh, obviously you 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 have this uh, already aligned but what uh, kind of customers are you trying to reach internationally what uh, it's usually your uh, focus on the ideal audience for your brand we have our audience very well known we know what is our target in terms of customers and, and partners of course when we make our marketing and I'm going to I'm going to say marketing, not only digital marketing, because we do have other things rather than digital marketing. We need to understand that we have two types of customers. Okay, in fact, we have three types of customers. This is very important. We have partners and distributors, so we need to make marketing for these companies. They need, and now we do this marketing. They need to understand that we are a very reliable company, that they that we are manufacturers, that we are OEM and ODM manufacturers that we can bring to them business and profits to their business. So this is one part. So we need to understand that we need to marketeer our products, services, and even our philosophy to these particular customers. And, and we are talking about business to business. Okay. Then we have the final customers and, and the final customers are the companies that buy our products. They are not the companies that buy to sell. It is McDonald's, it's Continental, it is uh, Google, etc. So they are our final customers where our products are going to be installed and serve persons. And this is again, business to business. And this is another type of marketing, another type of uh, way of doing things. But in the end, and this is very interesting, and we don't forget that in the end, we, our final customers are all the time, despite the fact that they are not the ones that buy the products from us, they are the ones that are going to use our equipments. We need to make also marketing for the persons that are using our products, because in the end, we must understand that they are the ones that are going to demand to our customers the implementation of that product. So that's another way of doing marketing. So we need to understand all of the scope of the customers, our target. And in fact, we do this here in our company. We have white papers for partners and distributors. We have white papers for our final customers. We have lots of, lots of content. We create lots of content. And when we create content, we create content also to, to the consumer. I love this because we are very horizontal and very vertical at the same time. We are very horizontal in terms of, of business because in fact, we have products and we develop and produce and manufacture products for all activity sectors that you may imagine hospitality, airports, municipalities, pharmacies, hypermarkets, hotels, etc., etc. But at the same time, we are a lot of vertical because in these particular sectors, we are very, very specialized. One of the great things about working in our company as the, the person in the marketing, it's never the same. One day is not equal to the other because one day you are making things and you are making videos and content and images and, and posts to hotels. And then in the next day, it's for airports. And then in the next day, it is for shopping malls. So uh, we can create lots of things. And uh, one of the things that I love also in terms of, of the marketing, it, it's not be so, so standard and then uh, do things that exit a little bit about the, the standardization of, of marketing. Yeah. And the... Um... One of the things that I love about your approach and uh, thinking about these uh, core clients that you have that are not buying for your product, but they are using it, it's they are giving also feedback 
if you focus on these kind of clients and how you are going to please their needs on this uh, uh, using your products, they are going to give you feedback on how they are using it right now, but how uh, it can evolve eventually in the future are going to need as a product. So it's also a way for you to evolve your products based on the feedback that you have from these clients that in fact are the ones influencing the other ones that are in fact going to buy your products. So I love this approach. Uh, indeed, it's very smart. Yeah, because as you may understand, each new functionality that you can implement in our product, okay, imagine if you are going to install 100 kiosks and 100 self-service kiosks in one big chain of, I don't know, sport, uh, retail, etc. And imagine that you are my comp competitor, okay, and you are going to install lots of products, okay. If I can install a unique functionality in that product that the final customer will say to, to, the, to the customer of our product, say, I love this functionality. What, what will happen? That, fine, that customer will say, okay, I want these in every kiosk. So it's a new functionality that in fact, the final consumer is demanding or is asking for that functionality. So we need to, to be all the time innovating, all the time creating new functionalities to our products, new features, because in the end, they are the ones that are going to demand that, that one, that specification. Yeah. And I imagine that your, the customer journey is incredibly the complex. Uh, it may take a few months until you close a deal due to the product that you are selling because it's not uh, an impulse buy. They are not going to see an ad on AdWords or something like that. And they are going to, oh, I'm going to buy a kiosk today. So it's not something that they are not, you need to have, I imagine that it's going to be something that it's going to take a few months until you close a deal. So how has been your planning to stay on top of mind of those ideal customers? for when they decide the, to search for that solution and then your brand comes up or they are going to find you. It's been every day, in, every day in LinkedIn making posts. <laughs> <laughs> really? Cool. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, um, the customer journey, well, we, we, we should divide these into two types of customer journey, like, like this, two, two journeys from the customer. The first is the one when they arrive to us, when they touch the first time our, our company, let me, let me say something that I, I believe is also very interesting. All of the departments of our company, they don't have the regular names of the standard names. My sales team is banned uh, because it's business awareness, etc. My uh, marketing uh, department, it doesn't, it doesn't call marketing department. It is small, zero moment of hook is the, the moment zero where we walk, where we fish a customer. Okay. So this is the name of our, of, of our department. So we have a journey, we have a journey until they arrive to us. They, they touch, they touch our company for the first time. And then we, we hook them. And then we have the journey after we are making the first proposal to them, the first quote. And in fact, the time for decision, the time to order is very, very long because as you say, and, and very well, we are, not in, we are not talking about business to consumer. We are not talking about a thing that it costs 10 euros or five euros. We, we're talking about a product that costs thousands of euros in the most, most of the cases. And uh, of course, it's something that they, they must, they must uh, analyze. They must understand uh, even the customers, of course, they need to understand the return of investment to invest thousands of euros in the product what type of, the, of return this product will give to, to them because it's not only an awareness, it, it must, must have benefits to, to them. And about keeping us in, in top of the mind of these customers, of course, digital marketing is very, very important. Not, not the regular follow-ups because, of course, you and I, we also receive follow-ups from the persons that are quoting us. And most of the times we say, oh, it's in study or most of the times... We don't answer because we are with lots of things to do. So I believe the best thing to keep us in, in top of the mind of our customers is making a consistent 
appearance, I will say like that, appearance in social networks. No doubt about that everyone is in social network. You can, you can be more in TikTok or Instagram, but uh, your colleague is more in LinkedIn, another colleague is in, in Facebook. So what we're trying to do is make content consistent. We make lots of content, okay? We try to, un to give to the customers, not only the regular, okay, we are the best, okay, this is our product, okay. We try to give them information about what they can expect to achieve in terms of return of investment regarding our products, if they buy our products. And of course, we try all the time to, to allocate the features of our products where they can benefit, etc. And social network is, I believe, the best, the best way to do it, of course, email marketing. I love that. What lessons can you give to entrepreneurs like yourself that want to, to bring their brand into an exponential growth as you've been able to do so with yours? So uh, if you would get these lessons from yourself, like um, the coming back from the future or something like that, what would you prioritize or what you would not do today if you know better? Acting all the time as a startup. Even if you are a company with 300 employees, I believe one of the greatest things about startup is the experimentation because they all the time they are experimentation. This is one of the good things. We are all the time making experiments about everything, about products, about service, about marketing, the way we do marketing. And uh, uh, lots of times we, we talk about the A-B test. I usually say we should talk about the A-B-C test. We should have an A and a C and a B and, and then, okay, let's make these and these and these and let's see how it goes. What I recommend to anyone that is starting the business or, or, or even is not starting a business and have, have a business and regarding the, the digital is going step by step. Taking in mind is ABC, not doing only the A and B. Okay, let's do Facebook, let's do Instagram and let's do LinkedIn. Okay, so take these three and then, okay, what are the results of me being making posts every day about uh, these three social networks? What is the result? And go step by step because if I do this today and if I don't, I don't have persons again to, anal to analyze the data, first I need to, to do this. I need, to, okay, let's see, let me make social network. Don't, don't go to make social network and a blog and another thing because in the end, I will not have time then to analyze the data and to see if my customer came from the blog or came from the, the Instagram. So one thing at a time. Let's do social network. Okay, let's do social network. Very good. Okay, let's let's try to understand where is the best social networks where we should making our uh, publications. Okay, after we define that, okay, then consistency. If it is resulting there, so consistency every day, every day, every day, more and more. And then if I have time, then let's go to another feature of mar digital marketing. Okay, let's do a blog. Let's see how is the results about blog. My SEO is improvement. I have some contacts that uh, came from the way that the, the blog is, okay, is resulting. Okay, do I have time to manage all these two things? Yes, let's go to another one. Let's do email marketing because in the end, if you are doing, and you know that because you are a, a digital marketing expert, you know that if you are going to do email marketing just for doing, just because you have a database of 2,000 persons and you are going to create an email in five minutes saying, okay, let's create an email, it will not work. First, it will not work because you are not thinking about what you are writing, what you are creating. You, are, you don't have time to make the A-B tests, etc. Second, you don't uh, have time to understand your audience. You, you will not have time to analyze the data. Okay, I send this email. I send this newsletter. What are the results? Why these five persons open and the others not? Should I have time to contact this person to know, okay, why, why you open this, this newsletter? And understand that is because something. I believe in the digital marketing, going step by step is the 
the best option. If you don't have time, well, <laughs> you are screwed <laughs> because at this moment, digital marketing is very powerful. In my office, I have something that is the Noob Guide. And the Noob Guide is all the, the stack, uh, what we call the digital marketing stack, and everything that you can do in digital marketing. And I, I am seeing that is a lot uh, of things that you you can do. And, and we, we just talk about five, six things. You have remarketing, you have, uh, I don't know, call tracking. Yeah, for sure. There's a, a world of uh, things in marketing that you, you can implement. So it can be overwhelming. It's a, a, just a way for us to focus on what brings us more return and then to focus on that and then we try to see where we can improve in the in the next steps that we need to, to take yeah but uh, awesome tip uh, the thank you miguel for this tip i'm not going to delay you much more because i know that you are very busy you are accumulating a lot of uh, the positions on, on your company you are the ceo the cmo the founder so you have a lot of things that you need to handle. So I imagine that your time is, is very short for everything. I, I really can't imagine all of, of the things that you need to do. So yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Yes. And I'm trying to more and more to have persons inside my company that I can delegate these um, skills that I have and, and I can train. And, and in fact, I will be very happy and I will love that. I can hire a CMEO that is understands better the, the business and the digital marketing and the marketing that myself. I believe that's one of the secrets of the companies that have success is when the CEO hires more intelligent people uh, than, than itself. Yeah, but it's also a great advantage uh, that you have there because it's very difficult for a CEO to understand marketing. And you have that because you are also uh, the CMO. And uh, most of the times for the companies that I've seen, even uh, big ones, sometimes they, uh, the CEO, when they don't understand marketing, there's a lot of clutch and sometimes the company doesn't grow as it could because they don't uh, the trust their marketing teams to do what needs to be done. And, and they are just focusing on the short term results. If they are not seeing the needle lifting as, as they want the, to be growing, the marketing team is going to be much more difficult for them to implement long lasting strategies that are going to compound uh, the growth in, in the future. So, and I've seen uh, this time and time again in groups on Facebook and on LinkedIn of CMOs that uh, are the pulling their hairs out the, because they their CEOs doesn't un understand that. They just focus on the short term results and uh, sometimes for long lasting situations of the brands to be very strong in the future, we sometimes need to implement some strategies that are going to bring results, but just on medium and long term the period. So it's something uh, they it's a challenge in the digital marketing there is only one way of having short results only one way because all the all the other ways are a marathon and the only way to have short results is you have a very huge budget that allows you yes that allows you to make a uh, uh, payment pay, pay hats it's the only way because of course if you have a very huge budget you have a great investment of AdWords, it's completely immediate because uh, you make the advertising today and tomorrow you can have leads regarding that, that advertisement. All the other ways, and everyone knows that, that everyone is familiar of, of digital marketing, all the other ways are in fact a marathon. If you want to be in the top list of search engines, you know that you need to make a very good SEO and to have SEO, you need to have a blog and to have a blog, you need to, to make content every day. And so this is a marathon and it's not easy. And you have the forums that you can go there. And, and yeah, for sure. The, can you tell us uh, how anyone can see more about you and your brand? How can they follow you? Yeah, we are in all networks, <laughs> we are in all social networks. So first of all, they can search for our company 
in the internet by Parteam or OEM kiosks. We have our websites www.parteam.pt, www.oemkiosks.com. In the LinkedIn, searching for Miguel Suarez. Let me say something that we don't discuss here, but I believe is very, very important. That is the personal branding. I believe one of the important things that uh, not only CEOs, but uh, the C-level, the C-level employees of the company should do is to create a, a personal brand. And when they are inside a company, they can create their own personal brand connected to that particular brand. It's not a mistake to do that. Okay, if I am working to part team, I can make a personal brand during this time that I am working with part team and linking myself to part team because in fact, is the company that is paying my wage. So creating a brand, a personal brand is important. I believe it's known that most of the CEOs in these days, the big CEOs of the big companies are doing this. Even the CEO of Microsoft, Apple, etc. We see them making podcasts. We see them making some small videos of presentation, professional videos or house-made videos, because I believe this is important also to give confidence to the customers that in fact, they are, they are dealing with persons. They are not dealing, they are not dealing with machines. Yeah. And, um, showing your face and uh, it's one thing also very important. It's uh, empathy. So if they empathize with you, the, for instance, on how you speak, how you express yourself, how you show yourself to the audience, they are going to be much more interested eventually on doing business with you, but instead of someone else or other brand that they don't know who's behind that brand. And, and, and let me say something that I believe is, is, is important. I don't truly believe of the, the distance that is between you as employee and you as a, I will say human, a, as a person, <laughs> where you are a very good liar or your acts, your thoughts, your posts, your personal uh, posts, more or less talk about yourself. And I believe if they are talking about yourself and if you are the CEO of the company, they talk about a little about your company, about the profile about your company. If you are confident, your company probably is confident. If you, if you have care about some things like sustainability, about uh, smart cities, about green, about the, the green world, etc. Maybe your company also follow your steps. So if you have empathy, maybe your company, your employees, maybe they, they are like this. So I believe also bringing this personal uh, philosophy and my thoughts as a person, as an individual to the social network, I believe it's important also to give to the customers the, the confidence they need. Yeah, for sure. Um, this was an amazing interview for sure, Miguel. The, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with me and uh, our audience. I hope uh, we can catch up in the future soon. So it was an incredible chat with you. A lot of insights that you've shared with us. So it was a complete pleasure from my end as well. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lee. As for you, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've liked it. If you did, please like this video, share with your friends and maybe, may, just maybe, you can subscribe to my channel and uh, I see you soon. Okay, bye bye.